Morning. So today we're going to be talking about the new reel mower from McLean, the 2024 model. This is the GR2 Low Cut Series. Before I get started, let me just go over a couple quick points. I spent my whole life being an entrepreneur and own a manufacturing company before I basically retired. And one of the things, there are a couple principles that I believe in, and I think you guys should probably take into consideration. Number one, if you hear a manufacturer bad mouthing another manufacturer, it's probably a good idea just to walk away. If you can't talk just positively about your product, it doesn't make sense. There's a big difference between comparing features and benefits and just bad mouthing. A lot of that crap goes on in the industry. I doubt you'll ever hear any of that from McLean. That's one thing I like about it. Number two, when I was running my company, everything we produced was manufactured here in the United States. We manufactured here in Georgia. 99% of all of our material source were coming from the U.S. as much as possible. We hired American workers and we produced an American-made product. To me, you know, old jarhead. <laughs> I'm an old jarhead, so, you know, that's kind of important to me, especially when we get into higher-end products. Now, you can't go out. I challenge you to go out and buy a TV, a computer, a security camera, or anything, and try and buy it where it's not coming from China. I'm just telling you, you can't do it. But when you get into these bigger products, like my UTV is a John Deere, my riding lawn mower is a John Deere, uh, I buy McLean real mowers, and I really like the fact that it's pushed that it's made in the USA. If that doesn't make a difference to you, then that's one of the filters we're gonna talk about that you can just ignore it. So I will run over some of the features, I'll run over some of the benefits, and I'll go through a filter list that I use when I look for my real mowers. Here we go. Before I begin, in the description below, I'm gonna link to a page and I'll try and keep it updated because there are changes. I'll link to this exact model. I'll try and find, I'll try and build a link that takes you to this exact model, which is the model I like, which is the 25, 25 inch width series with either a Briggs or a Honda on it, either one. This new series of real mower will cut down to as low as three eighths of an inch and up to about one and three quarters. They say one and seven eighths, somewhere around there. When you, if you decide to purchase this, when you put it, when you go to checkout, if you'll use the code DOC, D-O-C, you will actually get a free grass catcher. So that's a special that's running. And as far as I know, it's gonna be on there for a while. So go over there if you wanna buy it, you can order it. They actually are in stock and are shipping. The shipping time is usually about, if you're in the Southeast region, it's somewhere anywhere from one to three days, a little bit farther. It'll be maybe two to five days, something like that. And when it comes in, it'll come in usually on a box truck through a carrier. It'll be on a pallet and I'll actually break it down in the next video. I'll actually show me just put it together. It takes about 20 minutes to put it together. It's basically just the handle and the cables and that's it. It's ready to go. I will put a note that it does not come with oil. So if you do order it, you have to have at least you have to have one quart. I used, you know, just a regular 10W30 is fine in them. So. Here we go. I'm going to go step by step with it. Okay. First, let's be let's be real honest here. You can take 10 real mowers, go out and cut one lawn, put them side by side, and I can just about guarantee you that you can't tell which real mower cut what. Real mowers, once you get up into a certain quality, you know, $2,000 and above, they're all going to cut about the same. They all cut well. It's all about the performance and how they function that's really important. And that's where I kind of come up with my filters. So what are my filters? Everyone shops on Amazon, Walmart, Lowe's, and they always have filters. So are you looking what size? Are you looking for one inch? What color? They're just filters that you can refine your search by. And that's kind of what the way I think about it. So my filter number one is, is it made in the USA? One of the reasons why I say that is not just because I enjoy supporting the USA and USA workers, but we've been through COVID. We've seen what supply chain issues do. And I'm telling you, when you start to import stuff it becomes an issue with supply chain issues. And if that manufacturer all of a sudden starts to have trouble, your parts, your parts just disappear. McLean's been doing this for over 70 years. I can get all the parts I want. I can go on eBay, I can go on Amazon, I can order any parts that I want. They have dealers throughout the Southeast and on the, on the West Coast. You have the main manufacturing facility on the West Coast, you have distributors in the Southeast, it's all over. A lot of these companies have basically importers will bring in and go to one little warehouse somewhere and then distribute it. And if that gets in trouble, you're out of luck. I'm just warning you. So that's my filter number one. Filter number two, 
comes down to the ease of turn. I'm gonna show you a pirouette and why the McLean's with their two free rolling reels and one drive reel is so much easier when you come to an end of a cut. It's exhausting if at the, if at the end of every cut, you have to drag that reel mower and reposition it. With the McLean, you don't have to do that. It's a two finger turn. You simply pirouette 360 and you cut, you're on that next lane. I'll show you that here in a minute. My other filter is, can you manually cut with it? And what do they mean by that? So with the McLean, you have a, a handle that engages the reel and the drive. However, you have another handle that you can lift up and it disengages the drive wheel. So now I can use that as a manual mower. Why is that important? Well, if you have any obstacles in your yard, I have little flower gardens, I have walls, I have fences, I have to go around a curve. You don't want your drive wheel engaged while your reel is rolling. You want to be able to stop, or maybe like on our old house, we had rose bushes all along the back fence. And I like to manually go in there and just cut like manual without having to have the drive wheel engaged. That's so important too. My other filter, my other filter is a 25 inch. Now I know probably more 20 inch reel mowers are sold in the US than anywhere else, but that's because people are misinformed and it's because it's cheaper. I don't care what size lawn you have, a t the wider the reel mower, the better. A 25 inch reel mower will level out all of the bumpiness in your lawn. Just think about this. If you have a six inch wide reel mower, it's gonna follow every single bump. If you have a six foot wide reel mower, it's gonna sort of level out all that stuff. It's not gonna feel all those bumps in there. That's why I say I'm only cutting four 4,500 square feet back here. And I use, I've always used, after I bought that first 20 inch and started going with it, I was like, dude, I'm going bigger. So that's why my uh, True Cuts were the 27s and my McLean's are the 25s. The other filter is engines. I used to be a strict Honda guy, but ever since I have bought my toe behind cutter, my DR toe behind is a Briggs and Stratton. My aerator is a Briggs and Stratton. And I'm telling you, the new XR series from Briggs and Stratton is not their lower consumer grade. It's their professional grade engine. It is a fantastic engine. And I'm telling you, I have one of those on my toe behind and I'm gonna be honest here, I'm horrible at taking care of engines. Uh, um, I mean, on my aerator, we've had that for years. I've never changed the oil. I've never shut off the fuel. I've never even shut off the fuel switch. I've never drained the tank. I've never cleaned the air filter, nothing. And every time I pull that out, it's one start and it goes. Someone had a question about that on my YouTube channel about the aerator. I was like, dude, he was worried he had to do all this kind of maintenance all the time. I'm like, we just put it in the shed. That's our maintenance. I know I'm a horrible lawnmower dad. Is there another filter? Yes, I think that uh, your bed knives, I believe all bed knives should be heat treated. McLean heat treats. There's a high frequency heat treating process that's used. It's really cool. Um, it actually uses an electric heat. It, it heats it up to an exact amount and then right behind that, it actually comes with cooling water and it's a real cool process. I've actually seen it in action. Uh, because I had a metal shop. I've actually seen that in action. It's amazing. So all their bed knives are hardened and I have hit nails. <laughs> I'm telling you, I have hit nails, I have hit rocks, and I have never bought a second bed knife. I actually ordered one just to have it in case, never replaced it. I've never replaced a bed knife with all the real mowing I've done. That's just no. Backlapping. I have to be able to backlap myself. Do not buy a product that you have to send off to be backlapped. It takes me 20 minutes to do a back lap and I'm only back lapping probably now once a year maybe, that's it. Once a year I'll, but if I start to see a little bit of falling in my cut quality, I'll back lap. But other than that, once a year, the beach house one, I've had that for three years and I've back lapped it one time. So make sure you can back lap yourself. So let me go through some of the features of this thing and then what I'll do is I'll show you how the, some of these features actually impact your mowing because it's really important. I think that's, a lot of things, people want to talk about the construction, which is really important, but how this thing mows when you're going to use it week after week after week after week, and especially the larger the lawn you have, the more important some of these features come into play. So let me so show you. So on your mower, this is your adjustment setting. It goes all the way down to three eighths of an inch, all the way up to about an inch and three quarters, inch and seven eighths. Again, it's a one click and it goes up and down through here. Your uh, chain drive is under here. 
you have a seven blade standard. So it's a standard seven blade. They also make a 10 blade, which I really don't need. Seven blade is plenty. This thing cuts absolutely gorgeous. The bed knife is extremely thick and very, very hard. It's actually hardened through a process called, uh, it's high frequency hardening process, which is an amazing process, by the way, very high tech. So if you look at some units, <laughs> There is all these gear systems inside the, the unit. And then some of those gears are actually made out of plastic or nylon and they wear out. Matter of fact, one of the manufacturers, I was watching a video online, they told the customer that, yeah, uh, these springs will probably last you about two years and then they need to be replaced. And I'm like, really, dude? So anyways, the whole drive system of this is based on one belt. That's it, that one belt. And out of all the mowers I've ever had, I've only had to replace that belt one time. And guess what? The belts are nine bucks. You can get them on eBay. <laughs> and it's easy. You just take this cover off, slide it in, replace the belt, and you're done. Very simple replacement if you ever need to. But that's it. So what happens is, is you have an engage. When you pull this forward, it engages the, the whole drive system and the reel, and then it disengages it. And that's it. Very simple. This is the beautiful part about this system. I know a lot of people talk about a full roller all the way across, which I do not like. I actually like the fact that I have two wheels that are independently free floating, and then I have a main drive wheel. Got it? So understand that. That's real important here when I show you something in a second. So these two wheels are continually moving. They continually move and they're free flowing. This one is your drive wheel. You drop it down and you go, pull it up, and now the unit is free flowing, okay? And it can actually just sort of pivot. I call it a pirouette and I'll show you that here in a second. This, while you're cutting, this is your entire engagement system. So when you engage, that's it. It's basically a two finger engagement and then you go. Now that engages the drive wheel and the blades, but the drive wheel is not touching the ground. So one of the beautiful parts about that is, and this is a huge factor, guys. <laughs> I can use this as a manual push mower. Why is that important? It's because when I get up to corners, I don't wanna have to have the drive wheel engaged. I wanna go real slow up in that corner. Or if I start to get towards the end of that fence, I wanna slow down and I wanna go, I'll disengage as I get to the end of my path and then I'll just push it manually right up to there and then I'll do my pirouette. I'll show you that in a second. When I have little things like this, I have the little stone garden out here, I wanna disengage and I wanna just go around that manually. This little rounded corn section, I do not wanna be driving because I'll hit those rocks. If you have any type of, any type of obstacles on your yard, which you're gonna have, the ability to have the blades turn, but not to have the drive wheel engaged is so important. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the pirouette. What do I mean by the pirouette? The pirouette is the simple fact that when I get to an end of a cutting path, all I have to do, I'm using one hand basically to cut, and all I have to do is just lift the front up, I disengage my drive wheel, I just tilt down a little bit and I just do a, a pirouette. I just basically do a 360. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot until you're out here all afternoon cutting. So when I go to a path, at the end of my path, I don't have to stop. I don't have to pull that reel mower and then turn it and then push it and then turn it like a lot of mowers that don't have the ability of that double free floating wheel on the back, got it? So that pirouette action is such a lifesaver. It makes it so easy. So let me give you an example. I'll try and do one here on camera for mowing you. Mowing along, mowing along, mowing along. My drive wheel's engaged. Now what do I do? As I come up to the fence, I'm gonna disengage my drive wheel. And all I'm gonna do is I am going to lift up slightly. I'm gonna keep this wheel in place and this wheel's gonna turn around. So all I have to do is this. And now I am in line with my next path. That is, seems like such a little detail, but it's so important when you're cutting. And maybe I'll, what I'll actually do some cutting out here and show you, even though I really don't have a lawn right now, I have a mud pile because I'm reseeding. But that little, that little trick is so important. I'll do it from this angle. So my drive wheel is engaged and I'm going along and I'm going along. I'm coming up to the end of my path. 
I disengage my drive wheel. I continue to cut, continue to cut, continue to cut. That wheel is going to stay in place. This wheel is going to turn. And now I'm in line. Now I'm in line with my next path. It makes for such an easy, quick cut versus having to do this. So when I get to the end of my path, if I have a roll a real mower that can't do this, I have to go to the end. What I have to do is I have to go back, I have to pull it, I have to come back around, I have to pull the reel back over, and I have to line it up. So one of the things that's nice about this is you'll see me out here all the time mowing one hand and it's basically a two finger operation or a three finger operation. So all you do is you just squeeze like this and go. And that's it. This controls everything. If you, the wheel is up right now, put it down, it's going to be in drive. If you want to operate it manually and push it and get in tight, get around under bushes and that kind of stuff, use it as a manual reel mower, you can. And that's such a nice feature. I mean, your yard, if your yard has a lot of bushes, has a lot of edges, has a fence, no matter what you have, that feature alone, being able to do manual touch-up is so important. So I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna try and cut one-handed, I'm gonna hold the camera in the other. Good luck, Doc. And now I'm gonna cut one knot slower. I simply just turn the switch on, give it a pull. Oh man, it's been a long week. So I hope I provided some information that'll help you guys. Like I said, I've been cutting with McLean's for years and years now. And the, the cutting features of them is what I really focus on. The ease of cut, being lightweight, being able to go to that manual versus automatic mode. There's so many little features on them. The ease of backlapping. It's so easy to backlap. It takes you about 15, 20 minutes to backlap it. 
and the availability of parts. That's a real cautionary tale right now. We're going to start to run into these issues over the next two to three years. If you don't have a good system in place, if you don't have a national company that's been around a long time, if you don't have distributors, dealers, and all kinds of parts floating in, you, you really need to be careful. Now, McLean, they really didn't change any of the design of this piece, so all the, port, all the parts are still out there. Again, I can go to Amazon, I can order the parts. I can go to eBay, I can order the parts. I can contact a local dealer, I can order the parts. I can go contact McLean, I can order the parts. I can contact a distributor, I can order the parts. They're everywhere. Uh, your choice of engine, Honda versus the Briggs, it's up to you. A lot of people like the Hondas. I like Hondas, but I decided to go with the Briggs this time just to show you guys. A lot of you guys have asked, hey, Doc, why don't you get one with the Briggs on it? So I got one with the Briggs on it. Anyways, that's about it. Uh, hit subscribe, and I'll go ahead and I'll do a couple more videos on that. I'll show you the actual install on it. It's real simple. It takes about 10 minutes to put it together, and you're up and running. Talk to you later. Doc. Thank you.